Hey everyone, in my last video titled A Simple Ambient Algorithm, I got a variety of questions asking me about my process for creating musical compositions using code. And I wanna take some time to address these questions. So there were kind of three primary questions that folks asked. The first is what is live coding? Now the answer for this is pretty simple. Live coding is the practice of creating music, musical compositions using computer code. In my opinion, this medium has some advantages and it has some disadvantages. And a lot, big part of my artistic practice is exploring the advantages that this medium of creating music has. So for instance, uh, oil paint lends itself well to creating certain kinds of paintings. Um, the violin lends itself well to playing certain kinds of music. And in the same sense, live coding lends itself well to creating certain kinds of compositions. And that's what I've been exploring over the past few months. Now, my thesis is that live coding is well suited to creating ambient compositions. Now, the reason that I've been working on ambient compositions is because they're also, uh, excuse me, they're often very repetitive and, and iterative. And computer code is, is very good at doing the same thing over and over and over again with, with slight variations. So that's my thesis for, for the work that I've been making recently. Um, and you know, that's also my inspiration behind my recent compositions where I create simple algorithms that make ambient music. So the second question is, what language am I using? So I'm using Sonic Pi and I'm sending MyDi signals into Ableton 11. Now, Sonic Pi was created by Sam Aaron. It's a live coding language that I believe is based on Ruby. Sonic Pi is free and open source, so it's it's you know easy to download. And if you decide to use it, I recommend supporting the project uh, in whatever means you can. I think Sam Aaron accepts donations, and you can support him on Patreon, which actually also gives you access to the Discord, um, which is useful if you want to share your music and, and learn more. Anyways, so the last question is, can I explain my code? And that is gonna be the, the meat and potatoes of this video. It's kind of the primary purpose here. Now I will say when I shared my last video, I wrote code that I didn't expect anyone to see. And so as a professional software engineer, I can't say that it is my finest work, but I'm happy that, that people saw it and decided to ask questions about it. And I'm gonna do my best to explain it. I have rewritten it slightly for clarity. And so I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to, to parse it out the second time through. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that I do when I'm creating a live composition is I set the beats per minute. In this case, I'm using 120 beats per minute, which is pretty standard for house music. I think it's fast, but not too fast. I also oftentimes will define a scale. So this is optional, but I find this helpful. It helps me ensure that all parts of my composition sound good together and that there is sort of a cohesion between the notes that I'm playing across a single channel or a single loop or even many, many live loops. So I, I find this to be a good practice. It, it also is a bit of a hack because it makes it difficult to mess up and to play something that really does not sound right. In this case, I'm using the C Dorian scale, which has seven notes, C, D, um, D sharp, E, F, G, G sharp. So I know very little about music theory, but these notes are corresponding with these uh, MIDI notes. So 48 is, is C3, 50 is D3, and so on and so on. So now we're getting into the loop itself. Now this is only a few lines of code, but it accounts for everything that you heard in my last video and everything you're gonna hear today. So a live loop is a loop that runs forever. So this is gonna run when I start the script to when I, when I finish it. And the first thing that I'm doing here is giving it a descriptive name. So in this case, it's called ambient demo. So this part of the code is what's gonna be repeated forever. So let's, let's take a look at each section. Right here, I am setting the channel. So this is the MyDi channel that is gonna be linked to Ableton. 
So Ableton is expecting MyDi notes on this channel, and when it receives them, it's gonna be using the moving pictures pad as well as this auto filter to, to play the notes. Next, we have this four times do statement. Now, I actually saw that there was a comment saying how horrible this syntax is, and I agree, but it is also very legible. So what this is gonna do is, is go through this part of the code four times in a row sequentially. So let's break down what we have going on here. In this line, we are sending a MIDI output with this note here. So MIDI scale zero, which is 48. We're sending it to this particular channel, which is 12, which helps Ableton know where it's gonna receive input um, and, and you know what, what it should do with that input. We're using the following port and we have this sustain element here. So the sustain is how long the note is being held. And what we're doing is we are looping through this array. So every time this line is 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 uh, is played or or is run, we loop through this array here. So so the sustain goes from one to zero point eight to zero point six. Now one represents one measure. Zero point eight is you know uh, four fifths of a measure, and then this is three fifths of of a measure, and so on. So that's line 23. On line 24, we are sleeping or, or pausing for a quarter of a measure. So what this is gonna do is play this note, 48. It's gonna pause for a quarter of a measure, play the note 48 again, pause, and so on, so, so on and so forth. It's gonna do you know this, this twice, uh, excuse me, this four times, and then we're gonna move on to this loop right here. So here we have something that's very similar. The only difference is that I'm playing a different note. So in this case, we're playing my die scale seven, and we're also increasing it an octave. Now, if you're really observant, you might realize that the my die scale has seven notes, meaning that this is off, you know, it's not in the array. And that is completely true. So I set this to seven to pretty much omit from playing a note. So this is essentially like, doing nothing or pausing or, or sleeping for, 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 um, for four beats. So nothing's playing here, but as the composition progresses, I'm gonna show you how we can change this value and this one too, to create things that are dynamic and beautiful. Before we get started, I'm just gonna show you Ableton one more time. So here we go. This is the moving pictures pad. I've set the cutoff, the, um, the filter and, and so on and so forth. You can, if you have Ableton, you can go ahead and copy this if you want the exact same sound. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and play it. So once again, we're gonna be playing this note four times and then we're gonna be playing nothing for four times. Let's see how that sounds. So that sounds simple enough. The next thing we can do is change this note to two, which represents 51. So we can see how that changes the sound of the entire composition. So there we go. So we have this beautiful overlap, this beautiful chord here. Adjust the frequency. So there you go. 
that's an introduction to live coding and an explanation for how I created my video titled A Simple Ambient Algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and supporting and leaving comments. I was just amazed how many people watched my last video. You know, as someone who who creates it means so much when when people watch and, and leave comments. So thank you again and if you're feeling generous, go ahead and, and like this video and subscribe. Um, thank you so much. Have a great day.